shiny happy people and welcome again to another episode of Eye to Eye with me, Mrs. RD, and my partner in crime. Mm, how exactly do you pronounce your name? Ah, yes, my name. People have been asking. It's Ichdacht Angenectis. OK, um, I'm just going to call you my Mr. Thought. How was that? Mm, does it for me? Hmm. First of all, viewers, I'd like to apologise for the cancellation of the Naked Mud Wrestling. As promised last episode, Jeff Pease received a bill for the powering of the Electric Universe and is now in a state of shock. He's having to sell his house and his body to pay for it. What's that noise? I'm eating pizza. Excuse me? Did your mother ever tell you it was rude to talk with your mouth full? Yeah. Stop it! None of that in here. Sorry. Shall we have a look at random debunk of the week? Yes, moving right along. And the insanity of the 23rd of September. Ah, uh, yes. Now, I don't claim to know the Bible, but I'm more than capable of separating fact from fiction. This prophecy in Revelation 12, what on earth is it about? Utter madness from what I can see. So okay. many, so many, so many planets and stars aligning in. Is it Venus? Yes. And the sun. And it's supposed to be a once in a seven thousand year happening. Well, that doesn't appear to be true at all. Um, if you break it down into the parts. Virgo is clothed with the sun at the same time every year, so it's not anything spectacular. Um, the moon is at the feet of Virgo roughly every 28 days. Again, nothing very unusual or spectacular. And the planetary alignments happen fairly often, at least four times in a thousand years. And planetary alignments do not affect anything on the Earth whatsoever. End of. This, this all just seems to be a lot of astrology, numerology, punkum bunkum for those who can't be bothered to check facts. Indeed. And in fact, there seems to be a mixed bag of those who are saying it's the end of the world coming, and it's going to be the tribulation, and they're all going to bugger off and leave the rest of us behind. Well, that'd be great. We'll get some peace and quiet. Mm. You've then got the ones who are saying it's just a portent. Well, they seem to have changed their minds since last year when they said it was going to be the next big thing. Uh, of course. And then you've got certain authors who wrote a book in 2015 saying exactly the same thing. Will that be Mr. David Mead by any chance? Yeah, him. Oh. And it didn't happen then. And he's written a book saying it's going to happen now. Okay. And I don't think so. I've actually started a business you might like to invest in. I'm selling happy t September 24th cards. <laughs> we could make a fortune. I'm going to be rich. Do you think that, that some Christians just have a death wish. I mean, uh, their life's so dull, it's going to take an apocalypse to cheer them up a bit. But it's starting to look like it because they also go around bothering, just bothering, borrowing just about every other religion and faith um, prophecies for their own ends. Even yeah. if they're not end of the world, they decide that that could be useful to prop up their own end of the world. Absolutely. I wonder, is it, is it... <laughs> Is it comforting to believe that their chosen deity is some grand plan, order and chaos? It's, start, it's starting to sound a bit like Hitler. Oh dear, that's I'm a bit going, extreme. I'm going to bump you all off. Well. I can, think, I can think of several better deities. Oh yes, but then that would just make us satanic luciferians or whatever they like to call us. Yeah. I'd rather be a satanic luciferian than a nibtard. True. Mm -hmm. The pay is much better. <laughs> There's a wonderful quote from Philip K. Dick, who says, the mentally disturbed do not employ to the principle of scientific parsimony. The most simple theory to explain a given set of facts is shoot for the Baroque. And that appears to be uh, the absolute mindset of these people. Doesn't it just? They come up with the most outlandish twists and turns to justify just about everything you can poke at it. Absolutely. It's incredible. <clears throat> there's uh, there's a, a host of wonderful stuff to watch if anybody 
is watching this video and is worried about what's going to happen on Saturday morning, um, have a look at videos by Nerd with Attitude. Um, Dazza the Cameraman has a video of a live stream discussion which is in depth into the planetary alignments and that kind of stuff. Dr Keith Strong, the solar scientist, also has a video on it and over the weekend um, an ONS channel will be streaming live for anybody that has any questions, queries or worries about the whole thing. Um, all those links will be in the text box below. Yep, lots of good information there. What's the weather for you are today, Mr Thought? Um, it's slightly overcast, blue skies, a bit of sunshine. It's um, coming to the end of summer, but it's quite pleasant. It's gorgeous, bright blue cloudless skies here in sunny Scotland. Um, Matthew's a bit bored with his weather forecast because it's just always too dark and too chemtraily. So he's decided he's going to do a pollen kind report for us. Over to you, Matthew. Never in any of the years has this got as bad as it has now. Things are exploding out there. It's just absolutely unreal. Look at the trash here. It's all finished and Earth is ready for its pole shift. Gosh, thanks for that, Matthew. Welcome back. And it's time to see what Scotty's got in his equipment store this week as we see what Scotty is looking through today. It's a cystoscope, and here's the footage he caught. What I want you to pay close attention to is this very high elevation right here. Oh my. So, um. That is crazy looking. You know, and I was actually able to see this with my naked eye. Mm. Um, wow. You know, I did blind myself a little bit. They use sun simulators. Oh, yeah. Mm. Can this possibly be the brown dwarf? You just cannot <laughs> help yourself. And that segment was sponsored by Tena Lady. Hmm. I think Scott's taking the piss. You're in for a surprise. Don't piss me off. Oh dear. You're in trouble. Oh. <laughs> you know Scott had to sit up all night and study to pass that urine test. Did, and did he? <laughs> Epic fail. Oh. I bet he was pissed. But enough of the jokes. What does our guest bastard of the week think of this? Who is our esteemed guest bastard of the week this week, Mrs. R.D.? Oh, I'm very happy to say it's... Wank biscuit. God, I find that difficult to swallow. Thank you, Tony. You're welcome anytime. And to finish off this episode, let's hear our Nibtar comment of the week. Yes, indeed. And this is this comment is taken from the Dr. Sean Fost channel. A.K.A. Uh, Matt Rogers. Yes, him again. He thinks we don't know. And he's mirrored. Um, somebody else's video, which is about a sun halo. Mm -hmm. uh, a halo is, as we know, just just ice crystals, high altitude, exactly. refraction, blur. Mm -hmm. uh, and the comment is from a, a Walter Ruffo. My brother, my brother, my brother, my brother. I don't believe the sun is our source of light. God said, let there be light, and there was, before he created the sun. Sun, sun. Okay, giant light bulb, torch, bonfire. Uh, I have no idea. Probably a hologram. What a ridiculous statement. I know. I just despair. And that brings us to the end of the show. All that's left to say is goodbye from me, Mrs. R.D. And goodbye from me, my Mr. Thought. <laughs> bye bye. Sorry about slapping you earlier. Got a bit out of hand. It's all right. Can you 
bring a bull whip next time. <gasps> See what I can do. I, 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 I,